thank you. Thanks for coming. Well, before we begin, I want to uh, introduce a special guest that's here today. My Aunt Janine. <laughs> She's here from Florida, and she was biggest inspiration with creativity and art growing up. So if, if you could stand up so everyone could, and then everyone else stand up and give her a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. So we all think creatively. This is what Creative Mornings is all about, right? It's, from, it's not just the artists that get to think creatively. It's anyone that needs to solve problems and be able to focus and be able to get in this creative mode. And uh, you know, it's it, from preschool teachers to financial advisors, we have to think creatively. You know, and, and chaos limits creativity, because typically chaos leads to stress. And stress does this thing in your brain where it creates this cortisol, and that counteracts with serotonin and dopamine. And so uh, and that, those are the two things you need to be able to think creatively. So we need to limit chaos, right? Um, and I'm guessing that everyone here probably has some sort of chaos in their lives. So let me, let me tell you a story of how our mornings used to be and uh, see if you all can relate. So let me do some character introductions. These are our kids. Look at those angels, huh? <laughs> so we would start out the morning We'd lay out the clothes, and we're like, all right, we're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Look at this, we know what we're doing. Parenting's pretty easy. <laughs> then we'd set the breakfast table, get it all ready, we'd turn around. Oh, <laughs> look at this mess. Oh, the whole house looks like this. You've only been awake for 10 minutes. Okay, I, oh, our two-year-old figured out how to unlock the front door, is running up the street, sprinting up the street. I mean, look at that form. He just learned how to walk. <laughs> And most adults don't even know how to open our front door. I still struggle with it every day, and this guy. So finally, we get them all wrangled together, get them sitting down for breakfast, and then someone spills something all over themselves. No problem. I'm going to run upstairs, and I'll just go and get a shirt. Came down, got the shirt, feeling pretty good. All right. Oh, it's time to brush teeth. Oh, the toothbrushes are upstairs. I forgot the toothbrushes. No problem. I'm going to run back upstairs. Got the toothbrushes. Gosh. So, no problem. I'm just gonna run back upstairs. Got the toothpaste. All right, we got everyone. We got everything. One redressed again. A couple outfits through. We got a, all the teeth brushed. So we sit down and we start putting our shoes on. And oh gosh. <laughs> now you know. Whoa. Our mornings used to look like this. It was super peaceful. And now it's a little bit more like this. <laughs> and I love it. It's great. But the fact of the matter is, it's chaotic. There's some chaos there. And so I thought, maybe, what if I simplify my routine? So here's my shower, shampoo, conditioner, body wash. It's even labeled for me, one, two, three. <laughs> and if someone mixes it around, I shampoo my body and condition my face. It's fine. I get the job done. And then I, then I simplify my wardrobe. I've got a dozen of these shirts. I've got three pairs of these Levi skateboarding jeans. I've got a dozen underpants. Now that that's up there, I feel a little weird showing you all my underpants. <laughs> and then a dozen socks, and I've got a dozen long socks for when it's cold out and I'm wearing boots. It's a little reminiscent of Doug Funny's <laughs> closet. I'm fine with that. So finally, here we are. I'm walking Olive up to school. Look at her, so happy. So ignorant to the fact that her father barely got us out of the house that morning. <laughs> so, get into work. And I, I, I get to work with some really fun people alongside them. And, and, and it's this company I run called Secret Penguin. And we're an experiential branding agency. And it's basically like any other agency. We focus on the visuals and the, and the, the messaging. But we also focus on the experience. So we really dive in deep with that whole experience. So how people first come in contact with the brand and then how they how, what their experience is working with the product or the service, or if it's a physical location, what it's like to walk inside, what it's like inside, what it's like to, to talk with the staff there, what it's like to leave, and then how do you build those relationships with the customers. So we get real in-depth of how that experience all works out. And so we really need to focus, and we need to go and either create experiences or go experience stuff ourselves. So we find ourselves in some weird situations sometimes. Here we are getting chased by cows. You know, there's just a lot that goes into it where we need to really focus and get creative. 
And there's even things where we do things that aren't part of our job description because we love our clients that much, right? Like someone tells us something's impossible, we're like, no, you just gotta care a little more. And so we jump in and try to do it. Just because we love our clients, we love, we'll go and help build chair, chairs for people just because it's, it's fun and we wanna support them. We taste test things because that's super important. <laughs> And so, it, it, like any of our jobs here, or anything that we do, or even if you just need to focus on getting really creative, you need to be able to have that time set aside and this framework to allow yourself to really focus and do these things. Right? And we even do some workshops where we work with 200 plus employees where we get them all on the same page so they can deliver the same customer experience. And then we do workshops with little kids to tell them that you should care, and you should work hard, and you should work smart. Right? So it's really fun. But like I said, it's all about just having that time set aside, that framework created, so then you can really, when you go to work, you go to work. So, we get in, get into work. I sit down, we start the morning out, and we, we try to, we go over the agenda, what we're, gonna, what we're gonna do for the day. And then it hits me. Ah, it's no lunchbox. So if anyone, if anyone can relate to this, can you clap your hands? this chaos okay all right good good okay we're in this together we're gonna figure this out so this this is clearly not enough this is not enough but you know what here's this plan I've been working on for the past it's probably been over a decade <laughs> I mean <laughs> just refining it each time something doesn't work <laughs> and from 9 to 5 p.m. it works pretty well like I there's not a lot of chaos between those times so what if we just flip those and plan the day from 5 a.m. to 9 p.m. So, created an extension, so from 5 a.m. there's stuff to do, and then afterwards there's stuff to do. And I'm not trying to sell you this product. This is a, I'll, I'll give you a link at the end of this if you want to try to make it your own. But what I found that from 9 to 5, having that framework, it allowed me to plan my day, be a little bit smarter with it, and then I had this dedicated time to be more creative. So, before using the planner, there's a couple steps that I found that, that works, at least for me. Um, the first one is to understand why you want to do it, because life is hard, right? And so you need to understand when things get hard, why you want to keep on going. And the second is you need to prioritize what's important to you so you know how to schedule that planner so you can design your day appropriately, right? Um, if work is not the most important thing, then don't fill your whole day with work tasks, and it's very easy to do. And then next is to use the planner. So let's focus on why real quick. So one example, well, so every single day I start, or every single week, I start out by writing what my personal mission is. And this becomes sort of my lens of how I look at life now. And I make decisions then as I design the rest of the week based on that lens of what my personal mission is. So that's why I asked you all to, to, to write down what your personal mission is here on the name tags so you can think about it. And so I learned a little, trick, I guess, or, or this way to kind of get down and find a root of the reasoning behind your personal mission statement. So if you start out with, I want to be good at my job, that's a good start. But it's kind of surface level, right? And so learned if you ask yourself three times why, you typically get to the root of the reasoning. And so let's say, I want to be good at my job. Why? Well, I want to make more money. Okay, why? Or to afford more family vacations. Okay, why? Because when I was younger, it was one of my fondest memories with my family, and I want my kids to experience the same thing. Now that is something you can work with. So if you can distill that down to provide fond memories for our kids, and you write that down every week, like you're going to look at life in a whole different way. And, and you're going to make different decisions. And what if you're in a job that you love, but the salary is capped? You can still provide fond memories for your kids. It kind of reshapes the way that you think about things. So my personal mission is to make the community better for our kids. And so I'll give you a little bit of reasoning why that's mine, a little backstory. So I grew up skateboarding in the 80s. Look at, this is when skateboarding was cool. I mean, clearly, <laughs> skateboarding was so, look at those shorts. And then the 90s came along. I didn't get the memo that skateboarding wasn't cool anymore. And uh, we got picked on quite a bit. And uh, it wasn't the typical, you know, kids get picked on as they grow up. It got to a point where I, our high school would let the skateboarders out of class five minutes early so we wouldn't get beat up. You know, we'd get, we'd get spit on and we'd get jumped. And 
I got threatened at gunpoint multiple times throughout the city. And one of the times, I had a gun shoved into my mouth. And as I got shoved in there, I couldn't breathe. And I had these short breaths, and it just was like, it's like that. And You know, you know when you go to the dentist and they put something in your mouth and, and, and your tongue just touches it? Oh, I did that with the barrel. My tongue just goes <laughs> but it but it but it made something click in my in my head and I was like <gasps> I was able to take a breath and I was like, wait. And I was able to talk my way out of it somehow. And I don't remember exactly what happened, but I got away. And you know the worst part of that, of all of that was that I felt at that time like I didn't have a voice. I felt like I didn't have a platform to make things better. I felt like I lacked a lot of hope. And really, the only thing that kept me having any sort of confidence to continue moving forward were my, were my parents, my family. They believed in me and they believed in our friends. And I can't imagine what life would be like without that. I mean, my mom, since the 90s, had on her car, she still has it to this day, says, proud parent of a kid who skateboards. <laughs> it, so can you all give my, my parents a, a round of applause? <laughs> <clears throat> you know, I, th I think we got beat up one too many times. And we saw our friends get hurt by drugs one too many times. And we saw too many kids lose, just take their own lives one too many times. You know, we are constantly being called misfits and saying that we would never contribute to society. And so we started meeting every Thursday to try to get a skate park, to create some place that we could go and find community within there. And five long years later of meeting every Thursday, we got Robert Skate Park built. Thank you. <clears throat> and this was, this was a team effort of a bunch of misfits coming together and trying to figure out how to do this. But this was the first time that I felt like I contributed something positive to the community. And I had all those barriers in my head, all those things my parents told me were possible, I now saw that they were truly possible. And it completely changed the way I thought about things. And so I never want my kids or anyone to believe that they're not capable of something just because of what someone else had said. Now think about this. Back then when I got treated that way, I could have just changed my clothes and I could have put away my skateboard and I would have been fine. Think about the people that can't just change their clothes and get away from this, that are treated like that or treated even worse. And so I want to make the community better for our kids and I want to be an example to our kids. When they lose hope, they know that they they have an ability to not just sit there and worry, but to be concerned and then take action and make things better. So that's, that's my why. So now that you know your why, you write that and it frames your mind every single week as you design it. Next is pr to prioritize. Again, it's super easy to fill up that planner with work tasks, but if work is not the most important thing to you, you should probably change something a little bit, right? And now this is, I don't want to, this is, this is how I prioritize things, and this is how we prioritize things at, at Secret Penguin. So I'm not trying to tell you all how to live. Like, this is some, an exercise to do with you all, yourself if you want. But, so it starts with yourself. This is what's most important. And not in a selfish way. This is in a way where you think about what's kind of that mindset of if you're not doing well, if you're not healthy, it's harder, it's that much harder to take care of other people and take care of the things that you need to do to, to get to your mission, right? And so you start with yourself, and you think about physical health, mental health, uh, spiritual health, whatever that means to anyone. And then the next is family and friends. And this is based on the Harvard study that um, if you are in contact with someone that you love and care for at least once every two weeks, you are happier and healthier and you live a longer life. And so if you're healthy and your relationships are healthy, then you can go to work and really focus on work. But then also, with work being after family and friends, when there's a funeral, when there's someone is sick, a family member is sick, or a friend is sick, you can go and be with them, and that's more important. Because you're not gonna look back on life and be like, well, I worked another day, that was awesome. 
And I love work. I love work. Absolutely love work. But I would rather be there for my family and friends. And so that's the way that we structure things. And then last is community, which seems really weird, right? Because our, my mission is to make the community better for our kids. And Secret Penguin's mission is to make communities better uh, and more fun. But it's last, but it's because we're looking at it long term. We want to be healthy, and we want our friends to be healthy, and our, or our relationships to be healthy. And then work, uh, if there's a good kind of work-life management of that, then we have more time to either volunteer, more time to be with our kids, to help raise them up to be a part of the community. Um, or perhaps there's more funds that we can then donate to our community. And so that's just kind of a way to have a long-term participation of being a part of the community. Okay, so now that you know what's important, then you start using the planner. So here's the planner here. I always start every either Monday or Sunday night writing my personal mission. Woo, my personal mission. <laughs> um, and that kind of helps frame my mind of, of how to plan the rest of the week. And then at the bottom here, let me show you right, right here, at the bottom of each day, I start the morning, each morning then, writing down the one big thing that has to get done to continue moving things forward. And if you're like anyone else in the world, you probably have more than one to-do to get done that day. And so the rest of the to-dos go up during the day. And if you'll notice, there's also meetings scheduled within there because to-dos and meetings both take up time. So this is, if this is all meetings, you don't have room to, for to-dos, so something needs to change. I know it's easier said than done. A friend of ours, she uses this at her place, and she was able to show the person that she reports to that her whole week was full of meetings, but yet she had the separate sheet of all these to-dos. And so they were able to look at it really quickly, just like a snapshot, and be like, oh, something does need to change. And they were able to figure out what to do. So then the next, at the very bottom of each day, you write down, today I get to enjoy, and then whatever, you, whatever you're looking forward to that evening. And so this kind of keeps you in the certain mindset uh, that there's more, there's more going on and you need to get those, that stuff done so then you can go and really enjoy what you have after work. And this, is all, this stuff is all based on studies and research by people way smarter than me. And so I've just kind of implemented it into here. And then, so that's kind of, that's kind of the, 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 the work side of it, right? The thing that, that completely changed my life I know that sounds kind of like BS, but it completely changed my life, is having these tasks before and after work. So if you could see here, look at this, from six to seven, I usually have 30 to 60 minutes where I can just read or learn or draw or write, where I never had that before. I mean, you saw me, I was running up and down the stairs. I didn't have time for that, but if I was smarter about what it needed to actually happen, then I could kind of bundle all that wasted time and now I've got this time for myself. So it's kind of fun to design your actual day. And then at the end of the day, plan for the next day and go home. And then I've got this area that's open so we can be flexible. We can eat dinner and play. And then 7 o'clock, we try to get kids ready for bed. In bed by 8. And this must be Tuesday because trash goes to the curb on Tuesday. I didn't know that until Wednesday every single week. It's like, oh, well. And I've lived in my house for 14 years. So this really helps. And, and then at the end, it's all not just work-related or just like task-related. It's relationship-related too. Like my wife, she feels loved the most when she has quality time. And so we don't do this every night, but uh, it just helps me be mindful. Like, okay, I'm gonna, now everything's clean. I'm going to make a drink or a snack, and we can hang out. We can watch TV. We can go sit outside and talk, whatever. Right. So this is the key, though. I forgot my planner a few times at home. I was like, I'm a mess. So I said all these, I have 25 alarms in my phone. <laughs> it sounds crazy, but especially if you think about it, when you wake up and you're kind of tired, you're groggy, and it's just like, bing, oh, time to stretch, bing, time to make coffee, <laughs> I'm gonna go shower. I don't have to think at all. It's really nice. So really, like, I, I wanna design my life in a way where my kids can grow up and they'll look back and think of me as, as someone that showed them by example and being present for them, to show them that when things get hard, to not just worry about it, but to be concerned about it and then take action to make things better. And at the very least, I just don't want my kids to think of me as the guy that always forgot their lunch. <laughs> so thank you. This is the planner that you can download there and make it your own if you'd like. I appreciate you all coming out.